Hello folks and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about containers and what happens behind the scenes when you create a new container. And we'll see the networking side of things. And you'll understand that all of it is accomplished using an interface called the Container Network Interface. So we'll talk more about that and see what are the steps listed inside CNI. And ultimately, I'll also tell you why knowing such things is important, like where you can apply other uh, networking knowledge in your applications. All right. So let's just go right, right ahead into the notebook. Now you'll know, maybe some of you are already familiar with containers and here is an illustration from Docker where you can understand the flow. So for example, you have registry somewhere. It may be on your local device or maybe on Azure, Docker Hub, anywhere else. So there are a lot of images available there. You just pull an image there and run a container on top of it. And this is all accomplished using commands like Docker build, Docker pull and run. You can also create your own images out of Docker files and then push those to the registry so you can use it later on. This is a basic idea of a container. A container offers a lot of isolation and you may already know all of that. And the next step which you usually do when you are deployed on some orchestration platform is you create a YAML file such as this one. You specify the name of your image here and then you just run it on Kubernetes or any other orchestration platform. Right. So this is uh, what you understand about containers. Now you may notice that we not we don't, we don't talk about networking in any of this. Right. So when you when you are creating new container, you know you don't have a worry about if you have to configure any interfaces or you uh, take care of how different containers talk to each other right so how is that done who is responsible for all of that so just to give you an idea of it every container does have a network namespace associated with it so each network oh, sorry each pod has its own network namespace now this is in order to have uh, some isolation so if you don't know what network namespace is uh, just for um, it is just an isolation. For example, every network namespace will have its own IP address, its own routing table, so that you can have isolation between different containers. So this is, uh, network namespace is a part of Linux. Like. Okay, so I'll show you how to create a network namespace really quickly uh, on terminal. So let's just go over there. So you usually use the uh, IP package for all of these things. IP netns add, say if you want to add any netns demo, netns demo, there you go. So it has created a demo, uh, but how will I see if I created a network namespace or not? So I'll just use itnetns and list command. It will show me all the network namespaces I've already created in the past. So this is just a simple way of doing it. So once you're done with that, we can go to networking and see uh, more details about it. So why is it important? As I already mentioned, you need to know how your containers connect to other containers as well as uh, external environments. So you, you can get a good idea of it only after you understand how these processes work, right? Now this is a diagram which uh, shows you on the overview how things look. So every container will have some interface attached to it. Every net, this container is, you can imagine this as a network namespace of its own. And then there's a bridge. So what a bridge does is it connects all the different network namespaces together so that they can access the external environment. We'll be talking more about it when we talk about the container network interface, right? Yeah, so this is the container network interface. Now you'll ask like what it is and why does it come into existence? So I need to, I need you to imagine that uh, there are a lot of container runtimes, right? There's Docker, there's Rocket, Container, uh, container D, and then Cryo and others as well. So whenever you're creating a container, all of these runtimes will have to do all of these steps, right? They have to create a network, they have to create a network namespace, then they have to attach the IPs, and they have to do a lot of uh, steps. So there will be a lot of redundancy, like all of them will be doing almost a similar kind of work, right? So why don't we standardize all that work and then we can go ahead. So that standardization is called the container network interface. So a CNI will have the following um, tasks. What it does is it creates a bridge network, the bridge that I showed you on the last slide and then it creates virtual ethernet pairs. So virtual ethernet pairs are just like a connection, like just a wire connection, imagine like that. And then the two, the two ports are such that any information that you give to a single port will be almost instant, instantaneously be transmitted to the next port, right? So this is how with pairs work. And then what they do is they attach these two ends to a pod and a bridge, and then they assign the IP addresses and bring them up, right? So with the CNI in place, all you have to do, all the container runtime you have to do is create a network namespace. So maybe I'll just show you using um, this thing. So for example, this is um, this is a container runtime, say Rocket, right? And this is another one, say Cryo. 
So what these folks will do is they just create a network namespace. So the first step they they'll use create a network namespace, right? And then they'll just call the CNI in this case, and the CNI will handle the rest. If you look at this uh, slide which I scraped from the internet, you can understand what happens here. So a kubelet it first creates a network namespace and then it calls the CNI. Now the CNI is responsible for creating the virtual Ethernet pairs, allocating IPs, defining routes, and all those stuff, right? And on this diagram, you can also uh, get an idea of how these things are. Like there's a pod, there's a bridge. You create the Ethernet pairs and you attach those pairs to the pod and bridge. And ultimately, it looks some, somewhat like this, right? I can also show you the commands to set um, these things up, like creating a bridge network or creating pairs. Like these are also really simple. So just go over to the command line. There's a tool called bridge control. You can install it using app install, uh, I think bridge tools, I guess. So you can use the add pair command and add any page you want. For example, I want to add a bridge one, just say. Uh, not permitted. Okay, there's some problem maybe. Maybe I have to use sudo. Let me just check. Yeah, it's done. Now I'll see if I can actually view this. Uh, bridge control, let's see what the commands are. Yeah, show. Bridge control, show. Yeah, so you can see a bridge demo and a bridge one. And also notice that there are no interfaces yet connected to them, right? So I just created a bridge and there's no connections currently, the with pairs. So how do you set up a with pair is using the IP command again. So the IP link, then you can add the name of your interface, say it's zero. And what type is it? It's a with pair, right? So type with. And since it's a pair, I need to also specify the name of the other part. So the pair name could be maybe Mm, that one. So again, okay, second. Okay. Oh yeah, sorry. Already created one of these before, so I'll just have to change the names here. Maybe I'll just do this. Yeah, it shows it. So this is how you create an interface, and then the next step would be taking these interfaces, attaching them to uh, your bridge. So those can be done with using uh, using the IP set command. And then you have to set a master. And then something like that, I don't remember the exact uh, command line, <laughs> but uh, you can always find those through a quick Google search. You don't have to remember these all the time. So this is just an idea of uh, how you can quickly set uh, all these things up. So it's not really, really hard, but we just taken all of these steps and put them together as a continuous interface so that you don't have to do it again and again. And there are a lot of other functionalities that CNI's implement. You can check out the GitHub repository for understanding the entire scope of uh, what these things work on. This is just a very brief introduction. I hope you understand now what happens when you create a container and what happens behind the scenes, why Continuous Network is important. And maybe when you're building Network applications in the future, you'll understand how to use these things. For example, I also had an application which I built last summer where I had to check for, uh, where, to figure, where to figure out if any deployment which I had on a Kubernetes cluster was up and running. So I had to connect, um, so I had to go into every network namespace of every pod that I had on my cluster and check if that pod was able to access the service or not. So when you know all of these concepts, you can better figure out a way, you know, to get inside the network namespace. So in the future videos, which I'll make, I'll show you how you can actually go inside uh, network namespaces of all the containers. For example, uh, one time you can be in a container one network namespace, then make a call and see if your service is up and running and then go to the next container. And this way you can figure out if your service accessible from all containers in your cluster, right? So this is an idea. I'll be discussing how we actually do that in my next video. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new from it.